Now, I used to think that Jaguars were for old men. Either things have changed or I'm getting old, because I rather like the look of this Jaguar XE, and I think we should take a look around. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button, and you can keep up to date with all our upcoming reviews. Right, let's take a look. Now back in 2019, the XE had a bit of a facelift and it looks a bit sleeker than it did before. However, it's not lost that executive feel. We've still got this huge signature Jaguar grille and this fantastic badge proudly displayed front and centre. We've got a couple more grills down on the bumper that has been lowered and looks a bit sportier. It wouldn't be out of place on the sportier models. Um, these cat's eye like headlights look fantastic. Um, really really do i think they make the front of this car to be fair i think they look brilliant and it's got a pretty sporty look inside profile as well really really nice lines all the way down the car we've got integrated indicators some chrome detailing with the jaguar branding around that vent and it's all topped off with the 18 inch black alloy wheels great looking wheels Round the back, the sporty styling continues. These wraparound rear light clusters are in keeping with the ones at the front, look fantastic. And as much as I like the aggressive uh, Jaguar badge at the front, I do prefer the classic one, and we've still got that here on the rear boot. Down at the bottom, we've got twin exhaust piercing through the rear bumper, and they are real. Fantastic, no fakery there. All in all, fantastic rear end. So let's do a boot test. We'll start firing in our shopping bags. We've got two, three, four in there. Let's have a look, see what else we get in here. We can go five, six, seven, seven, eight, eight, eight bags there. And there's probably room for one more. So we've got a nine bag boot. That's rather impressive. Now, sadly, when Jaguar did the facelift back in 2019, one area they neglected was the rear seats. There's not a great deal of room. This front seat feels quite in my face at the minute. There's a little bit of room between my knees and the seat, but I've nowhere to really put my feet. It's, I have to sit very stationary and still when I can't get comfortable. Headroom in the centre is okay, but as you move towards the edge of the car, it curves down quite a bit, and there's a little bit of a dip here or a bulge sticking out so my head hits that if there was three people in the back i would be banging my head on the roof um, speaking of which to get a third person in i don't know where they would put the feet because my feet are taking up all the space down here in the footwell so it wouldn't be great for a lot of adults in the back children it probably wouldn't be an issue there is isofix for child seats and smaller children would feel okay you might end up with a lot of footprints on the back of your chair though because well, there's nowhere else for them to put the feet, sadly. We have got some blowers in the back here, and we've got what's down here. We've got heated rear seats, um, which is a little bit of a bonus, I suppose, but then I suppose the kids would mess with that if they could reach it. I don't know. I think if I was sat in the back here, I wouldn't want heated seats because I'd be quite cosy anyway. Um, we've got a middle armrest, which is a little tough to pull down, and we've got a couple of cup holders. Um, so that's not too bad. There's no access to, oh, there is access to the rear. So it's a little bit different. Just underneath the headrest here, there's a little trigger, which gives you the access to the boot and you can put some longer items down the middle. But once again, I wouldn't want to be putting anything through the middle because quite frankly, if I was an adult in the back, I want this room to myself. Um, I hope it's bigger in the front. Let's have a look. And thankfully, the front is a much more comfortable place to be. The seats are really nice and toasty warm because the heated seats are on. I might turn those off because it's a rather nice day today. And that's quite warm on my little touche. Nice and comfortable. We've got plenty of play in the steering wheel, which is actually really, really comfortable to hold as well. It's a good feeling steering wheel. We've got paddles on the back so you can overwrite the uh, the automatic gearbox if you need to. We've got a few controls on the steering wheel, but not too many. Just a nice amount really, so it's what you need. We've got soft touch leather all around the doors. 
and on the dash with some nice stitching and the center console is solid with some good chrome detailing but the biggest upgrade to the xe is in the technology and let's face it that's the way the world is going now people want more and more technology in the cars so they've upgraded the screen to the touch pro duo basically what this means you've got this nice i think it's a 10 inch screen on the front there with your sat nav media phone all your apps everything like that is on there and then underneath this we've got a second touch screen which operates your heated seats your climate control and there's a couple of other little bits on there however even though it's a touch control screen you do have some dials here to alter the temperature so you don't have to fiddle about with the touch screen whilst driving really really good it could actually be a touch touch triplet pro get that right because this dash here on the front um, with the speedometers is digital as well really clear really easy to see you can change the look of that a little bit to suit you and how you want it to look but really really nice and in fact it could be a touch quadruple pro because we've got this rather amazing rear view mirror so right now it's like a standard rear view mirror i can see out of the back because we've got the tinted windows in the back um, i can see pretty well now because it's a sunny day because of the tinted windows if the light levels dropped it might get a little harder to see so if you pull this little switch here on the front it suddenly turns into a digital rear view mirror so you've got a camera on the fin on the roof at the back gives you a wider field of view so you can see your blind spots a little bit easier as well you can see anything entering your blind spots and then you've got the wider obviously the uh, re the wing mirrors there so you can see out the side uh, but that is real i mean it's crystal clear right now on a sunny day i might have to use that on an evening sometime when the light level drops and just see how it looks but i'm really impressed with that it looks fantastic and when you flick between the rear view mirror and the digital you can actually see a massive difference in the field of view so that is really impressive really like that we've got a couple of cup holders here in the front with a 12 volt charger we've got a little mat there where you could maybe put your phone or something non-slip and we've got a bit of a compartment down here with two usbs you've got the micro sim card for your sat nav and another 12 volt plug there so you've got two 12 volts in this car the door pockets unfortunately are very very shallow very shallow indeed they're probably about maybe two to three inch deep so you're not really going to get a lot in there if i'm honest um, electric windows we've got automatic lights electric seats it's a really nice car glove boxes a decent size it's not the biggest but it is a decent size and you've got a little sunglasses holder up there all in all really really nice let's see how it drives The driving experience is every bit as good as the old model. The suspension is absolutely fantastic. It's making light work of the poor British roads. It's eating up potholes and poor road surface like nothing else. Really, really is superb. Now this is the two litre diesel um, with 180 brake horsepower. And it's not a bad engine to be fair. I'm traveling at about 40 miles an hour. If I put my foot down, it picks up fairly quickly and then we hit 60 miles an hour there. Really, really good. I, I like this gearbox, I think it's all right. It's not quite as lively as its rivals in say the BMW and the Audis, but it's all right. This thing is built for cruising though. It's not built for the, the agile corners and things. It's up and down motorways and driving in comfort. And as a cruiser, it's superb, it really is. From a standing start, it eases away from traffic lights nicely. You put your foot down and it doesn't lunge or anything like that. It's very, very sophisticated in the way it takes off. I've got to say the driving position is fantastic. I feel I've got great visibility. I feel comfortable. The steering wheel is really nice to hold. Please, somebody let me know in the comments, am I getting old or have Jaguar up their game, and is this now quite possibly a younger man's car? Now let's give this a little bit of a 0-60 to 60 test. So from a standing start, go. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, there we go, so seven seconds, about seven seconds, so it's not bad for a larger car. The digital rear view mirror, I've got to say, is absolutely fantastic. It takes a little bit of getting used to. When you look up, you think, what am I looking at there? It's, it's not the usual view you would get. In fact, it's better. You get a much clearer view and a wider angle than anywhere else. There's a car behind me, if I flick it to the normal rear view mirror, and I can basically see, I mean, he's driving, he's practically trying to climb in my boot, to be fair. Uh, or she is. Um, I can only just see the bottom of her windscreen at the minute, but if I flick across, I can now see her wheels. Maybe the depth perception isn't as good, but it gives me a good wide view, which isn't a bad thing, I suppose, going down the motorways, because you've got such a wide field of view there, you can see what's entering your blind spots a little bit easier. It does feel a little bit on these smaller roads at lower speeds. The car's revving a little bit. It's like it's, it's saying, let me go, let me go. I want to go faster, which is quite strange because on the faster roads, it's quite refined and it's holding back. So it just goes to show that this car is a cruiser. It's built for just plodding along, eating up those miles in comfort. And if that's what it's built for, then it does it absolutely superbly. Whether I would choose this over BMW or Audi, I'm not sure, but it's definitely worth considering. Now, before I set off today in this car, I had a quick look on the Jaguar website, and the XE starts at around £33,000 from new for the base model. And the price does jump up quite significantly as you upgrade your trim level. However, we've got a number of these cars in stock, um, amongst other models as well. So if you want to save yourself a few quid, have a look on the website, or bob down to one of the showrooms and see what we've got amongst the 4,000 other cars we've got, and you just might find a great deal. So the XE is a fantastic executive saloon, and whilst it may not handle as well as its rivals, it's got the comfort needed for cruising lots of motorway miles and the technology that it packs means it's definitely worthwhile considering. Once again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos, and we'll see you next time. Availablecar.com